Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Will Dupree broadcasting from KXAN here in Austin. In just about 15 minutes time, a debate is happening between these two people right here. That's the Democrats vying to become their party's nominee for the U.S. Senate seat here in Texas. Decorated Air Force veteran M.J. Hagar and State Senator Royce West made it to the runoff after the initial primary earlier this year. Now, before we hear from them during their only face-to-face -face meeting ahead of the runoff election on July 14th, I'm joined right now by our Next Star Bureau reporter, Wes Rappaport and the host of the State of Texas program, Josh Hinkle. He's joining us from Skype. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Thanks. Thanks, Will. I think that we should maybe kind of reset everything for everybody because there is so much happening at the moment, of course, with not only the coronavirus pandemic, but protests across the country and here in Texas related to the death of George Floyd. There is also an election happening, and that's what we're highlighting today. Wes, you had a chance not only to talk to MJ Hagar and Royce West, but also the Republican incumbent senator, John Cornyn, recently. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we have uh, gotten the opportunity to talk to uh, the, the not only the, the two Democrats, but also the incumbent, John Cornyn, uh, uh, who uh, will face the winner in this runoff uh, in November. And, and there's certainly a lot to talk about. Uh, you know, you, you've got a, a traditionally red state um, in, and, uh, and John Cornyn uh, looking to, to lose no ground there. And you've got uh, a you know two Democrats who uh, are looking to to you know shake up the establishment uh, as it were um, you know one with with a, a lengthy career in the legislature and another uh, with uh, with no uh, political experience uh, looking to to break through and and enact some change. So we will definitely be looking forward to seeing what happens here. And if you all want to see who these candidates are and kind of where things stand in the race right now. Wes put together this story a little bit earlier this week, so let's watch that first. Coronavirus pumped the brakes and changed the way Royce West and MJ Hager campaign. In the military, they teach us not just to overcome obstacles, but try to turn them to our advantage. Travel time turned to virtual voices. In order to make sure we can reach out to people and also do fundraising. As both candidates focus on issues like jobs, health care, and racial justice. Just because a person happens to be African American, they're treated differently by police. That's a fact. That's not somebody who said, oh, here we go again. No, it's a fact. If we don't have credibility in the justice system, are we on the verge of anarchy in this country? There are disparities in health care, you know, racially. There's disparities in our criminal justice system both racially and socioeconomic status uh, with people who are economically disadvantaged, not having the same criminal justice system as, as the rich and powerful. Um, so I think that there's issues out there that Texans are talking about and that we are talking about around our kitchen table and the water cooler, but that our representatives, because of our low voter turnout in the past, are not talking about and are not legislating solutions to. The winner in July faces John Cornyn in November. He says he plans to watch the debate and is ready to put his record against whoever wins the runoff. I tend to be more of a problem solver than, uh, than a show horse, but uh, I appreciate um, the chance I have to work on behalf of Texans, and I'm proud of the, uh, the record we've accomplished. Joining me once again are Wes Rappaport and Josh Hinkle. Guys, a um, lot, a lot to address for these candidates that are going to be debating this evening. So many issues happening all at the very same time. Josh, kind of break down where you're seeing this um, and this, is, this discussion leading to tonight. I think the thing that people are worried about so much in the country right now is what's going to have to be the focus of this race and most political races across the country this election season. The coronavirus, of course, has been raging for the past several months, but then you've also got uh, this new emergence of this police brutality conversation. Clearly, this is something that's been going on for a long time, but in the last week and two weeks, we've seen so much more publicly. And I think that the candidates cannot go by tonight without addressing that, specifically how their campaigns, and if they become the next U.S. Senator from Texas, how they will address that in Washington. 
Wes, where do you see that conversation going tonight? Well, it's certainly a complicated one. And, uh, you know, what you heard a little bit in the story there, you know, that it, it has had to transform the way that these candidates have approached the campaign. I mean, you know, they are so used to the, that traditional kind of campaign model of hop in the car, drive to these communities. You know, Texas has 254 counties, um, and, and each uh, uh, of the the you know those democratic parties in those counties want to hear that they want to n make sure that their voices uh, are being heard uh, by the people who are running to represent them so you know, running for the statewide uh, position, you have that unique challenge of of making sure that you you kind of got to hit at, at least a, a, a solid portion of all of those counties. You know, make your presence known in those communities a little bit harder to do when the traveling is is uh, been reduced to a minimum here uh, with with the coronavirus. Of course, you know, you pile that onto some of the very important conversations happening in our communities across the state and across the country uh, about criminal justice reform, about police brutality, uh, and about racial justice. And, and uh, you know, you, you combine those two things together, it, it makes for uh, uh, not only just an interesting conversation, but also one that, that uh, is so important to have. And so I'm looking forward to hearing how the candidates uh, are able to address those concerns uh, of the American people and of the people of Texas uh, in their discussion. Sure. Now, before this debate gets started here in just a little, almost five minutes away now, we want to play a statement that the chair of the Texas Democratic Party sent us. So let's take a listen. Welcome, Texas Democrats, to the U.S. Senate debate. My name is Gilberto Hinojosa, and I'm the chair of the Texas Democratic Party. Today, Texas Democrats are proud to host our two Democratic senatorial candidates, M.J. Hagar and Royce West, as they debate the issues that matter most to Texans and discuss what the future of Texas looks like under Democratic leadership. Both of our candidates are, have exhibited an unwavering commitment to our Democratic values. They have both fought for working Texans, and they have fought for an inclusive, equitable, and progressive future. However, before they kick off the debate, I want to discuss all the progress Texas Democrats have made this election cycle and all the work we're going to get done. First of all, each and every one of y'all is part of the historic change happening right here in Texas. Today, in our state, many families fear for their future, for their loved ones, and for their lives. But Democrats are fighting to change that. We know that it is up to us to uplift our neighbors, help our families and pave the way for our children. We embrace progress. We overcome the inhumane policies set to, fear, to tear our country apart. More than anything else, we believe that it is our duty to leave this earth better than how it was when we arrived. That's our mission, and it's our responsibility because we know that Republicans like John Cornyn are doing everything in their power to destroy the hopeful, inclusive vision we have for the future. Texas is the biggest battleground state in the union. This is our moment to turn Texas blue because of the hard work of Democratic candidates like M.J. Hagar and Royce West. M.J. Hagar and Royce West are intent on leading Texas into a new era. They will be guided by their dedication to democracy and their commitment to proving a fair shot for all. If you're ready to join them, text Texas to 21333. Texas to 21333. Thank you so much to everyone tuning in at home. And of course, thank you to our candidates for being here today. All right, that was a statement from the chair of the Texas Democratic Party. We should mention that whomever wins this runoff election, whether it's MJ Hagar or State Senator Royce West, they're going to face a three-time, a three-term Republican Senator John Cornyn. That's a pretty tough, uh, steep hill to, bat, to climb, but the chair of the Democratic Party here in Texas says that Texas is the biggest battleground state. That's the statement he's making tonight. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think that um, in recent days, what you've really seen is that John Cornyn, our current U.S. Senator, has really focused his attention and his campaign against Royce West. So that might lead you to believe that he would want to face Royce West in the November general election. Um, some of that 
uh, campaigning has evolved into um, accusations that John Cornyn um, is using racist tactics. Uh, some of the things he said about Royce West could be interpreted by some that way. So I think that that's a way that uh, part of the police brutality and racial equality conversation might come up tonight. Um, you've even seen MJ Hagar coming out in defense of Royce West and saying that uh, Senator Cornyn's campaign needs to apologize to uh, Royce West. Wes, these candidates made it to the runoff after uh, coming clear out of a field of 12 back in March. Yeah, it was it was a gi gigantic field, and uh, and MJ Hagar was uh, at the top of that list uh, in the uh, March primary. Of course, uh, you see there a decorated Air Force veteran um, uh, d did not win her bid for uh, Congress to represent uh, par the part of Central Texas over there in Williamson County uh, in 2018. Um, she got 22 percent of the vote in March. Uh, she is uh, one of the top fundraisers uh, in uh, the state uh, for the Democratic Party. Uh, on the other side, Royce West uh, has been the state senator uh, representing uh, uh, the Dallas area for quite some time. He is a lawyer and he won 14 percent of the vote uh, there in March. So uh, cer certainly something to, to look at here is uh, how much are the candidates going to go at each other uh, because they do have to beat each other in order to face John Cornyn. Uh, but you might see uh, some of some of that uh, uniting behind uh, sort of the greater democratic cause uh, to to uh, try and take down John Cornyn. So certainly uh, we'll be watching uh, how much they go back and forth at each other versus the self promotion and then also the uh, the targeting of the incumbent there. All right. Josh Hinkle, the host of State of Texas, joined us from home via Skype. Thank you, Josh, for being here. We do appreciate that. And Josh, you'll be live tweeting during tonight's debate. Is that right? That's right. Maggie Glenn and I will be live tweeting so you can follow along on Twitter and you can even ask questions of the candidates. Just use the hashtag TXSENDEBATE. All right, Josh, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to let you go so that you can get started because the debate's going to be beginning here in just about less than two minutes. Thanks again, Josh. Thank you. Wes, you're also going to be covering this and wrapping up for everybody here across the state. Uh, the conversation that gets had here in just a moment during the debate. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's sometimes it's hard to boil down a, a full hour uh, of uh, of conversation, and, right. and there is so much important, uh, so many different important topics that uh, surely we'll we will get to. Um, so uh, part of my job is making sure that we kind of pull the highlights out and and, and give you the the best recap we can uh, for the evening news tonight. And we want to remind you all that primary this primary runoff is happening on July 14th. And if you would like to vote in it, you can register. You have up until June 15th to vote in that primary, so keep that date in mind. And early voting runs uh, uh, June 29th through July 10th, uh, so uh, there is an opportunity to uh, cast your ballot early. I know a lot of people uh, are concerned about, uh, you know, we're, we've had that coronavirus conversation of, uh, you know, are you safe to, to go out to the polls and all that, so plenty of time there to um, cast your ballot uh, in the early voting period, so uh, maybe some less crowds than on uh, Election Day on the 14th. 